Hey folks, good evening. So, um, kind of going a little bit live a little bit early tonight. Um, I don't have my production assistant with me, as you can see. Uh, Rick had some uh, Rick had some daddy duties that he had to tonight. take care of. Um, I don't have my production assistant with me, oh, as you can see. Daddy had some daddy duties that he had to take care of, and since my son is 33 years old, I don't have daddy duties no more. So I get to spend the night with you. So. This will be fun. Um, so we've got uh, uh, says uh, six people in here. So I'm kind of watching on. Uh, I'm gonna try to do this on on Streamyard, but then you got that delay on YouTube. So let me switch the screens around here. There we go. Um, uh, <laughs> Betty Jean, you saw you thought that was funny. I won't I won't talk about how, how nice the weather is down here, I promise. Um so we have got in here. Well, I'm gonna do that. I'll just let's just chat because I got another minute or so before before we're supposed to start, folks might start coming in. But uh um yeah, I'm I'm freelancing this tonight, so I don't have my production assistant here, so he's not here to drop me notes during the live and tell me what I can and can't do, what I can and can't say. So, so you get the completely unedited La La version tonight. Um, you can't take me off the rails. Um, so, we have a bunch of folks in here already. It looks like uh, 12 people. Uh, it is 7 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and start rolling on this. As you know, we're going to have Jess in here tonight from... Uh, Keto Homestead with Jess. Uh, she's been on the schedule for probably, I think when Jess contacted me, she was probably, uh, I don't know, probably six or seven weeks out. And that's, she's one of the last few that I put on the schedule. We've only got two scheduled after this. Um, and, you know, we're going to, so we're still, we're still tinkering with what we're doing. We pretty got, we got a, a pretty decent idea. And, uh, you know, it might be similar to what we're doing right now, which is more, uh, kind of free flowing with occasional special guests uh, with topics, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we have got in here tonight um, MB Heritage, so Michael and or Bobby Jean, my North Carolina buddies. They were the first ones in here. Freehandly made uh, was second, and uh, uh, Nisi is on her way taking the taking the kiddos to scouts. And, um, you know, congratulations to your son. That is that we were chatting about this before we come on live. Um, that's just an amazing accomplishment for a young man. Um, my I've known several, several Eagle Scouts and including my son-in-law, who is he was on here several, several weeks ago um, before they moved up to Washington State. And uh, he just made chief petty officer or E7 in the United States Navy. And uh, part of the reason that he advanced so quickly is because um, is because he was an Eagle Scout. He was he went into he came out of boot camp as an E3, which is you know on the on the Rocket Express for advancement. So uh, he's done well, and it all started with kind of that commitment that it takes to become an Eagle Scout. That's that's not no small feat. A uh, very small percentage of of, uh, of Scouts ever make it to that level. Let me readjust my screen here. See who else in here. Paula's already hard at work. You are a charm, Paula. So we got MB Heritage freehandly made. Uh, Betty Jean Holson. And and here's the here's the ground rules. You can't talk about blue skies or sunny skies, um, and you can't talk about warm temperatures wherever you are because Betty Jean is in Wisconsin, and 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 uh, I don't. <laughs> Don't want her to feel bad. So no, I'm just kidding. We can talk about we can talk about talk about those blues. It has been gorgeous here. Um, who else we got in here? The Hobby Farm Homestead. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Paula Wells, moderator extraordinaire. Maybe crazy Homestead. Wanda, Louisiana style. I'm assuming Wanda, you're in Louisiana, so. Um, you guys are probably having some decent weather again. I'm, you know, it looks like this uh, this crazy weather that, that covered from really Florida Panhandle westward uh, is kind of resolved. So, so prayers answered. I hope you came through that well and uh, kind of back on track. I know there's a, there's uh, some folks here from Oklahoma. Same thing to you, and even from Texas. Um, so Jess is in here. Welcome, 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 Jess. Little Frenchie in Big Texas. Um, 
And I got your, I got those, I got those ordered today. My apologies. I was very delinquent on my email to you and now, uh, but they went out today. Uh, Rick Twinbrook Acres. I'll say, I'll say it. What's on your head, Rick? <laughs> you know, the spiel, man. Um, I gotta get through all this other stuff first though. Um, it's another one of my, you know, people ask me, when are you going to run out of hats? And, and I keep saying, it's going to be a while before I run out. I've got a lot of hats. I probably, I probably got at least 15 or 20 more. Um, and that's if I don't get any more between now and then. And I get them fairly regularly. So I probably will never run out of hats. I could, I can even go to like some, some other hats. Like I went to a Civil War reenactment, probably about 10 years ago. I got this coolest, the coolest hat from that reenactment. Really, I don't even know. It's kind of like a, um, this is going to be, this is a stereotype of people from down under. So what, I don't know what you call that hat, like Crocodile Dundee War, whatever that hat is called. Um, but I got a hat like that, that I got from that reenactment. And, uh, and it, and it, uh, it's handmade. So it's, it's a pretty cool hat. Um, who else? Uh, Mama Steve. So, so. Uh, Steve, what, what's that hat called? The Crocodile Dundee War. Tell me what that is, because that's the kind of hat that it is. Um, Michael Harris, welcome, sir, from the great state of Texas. Another uh, uh, fellow goat breeder over there in Texas. Michael's been around with our channel for a long, long, long time. We got Robert in here from Homestead Aquarius. Thank you, sir. Um, um, how did your uh, how did your rattlesnake seeds come out? You, did you get them from the store? You said that uh, you were kind of on your way when we were in a live earlier, and uh, didn't want to miss out on that. So I hope you got what you were running for. Um, Residence Homestead, another down under channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, nothing edited. Another Texan. So I hope all of you folks are are kind of back in the saddle. Petway Family Farmstead we got in the house. And if you did not see James from Petway Family Farmstead's announcement, uh, they're doing their very first live tomorrow night. Um, um, James, drop a link in here for your live tomorrow night. Um, and the kind of special cool thing about, about James's live, not only is it their first live as a channel, uh, but they had a time of it in 2020. Now, if you're not subscribed to, to a Petway Family Farmstead, go check them out. Um, uh, they had, they, they come down with the virus and, uh, and, um, uh, his wife, Angela was hospitalized for, I'm going to guess here, James, a couple of months. Um, and she just recently in the last couple of weeks got home and, uh, and, uh, looks like she's back in the saddle or at least that's outward appearances. So they're going to be on, on, uh, on the Petway Family Farmstead uh, live stream tomorrow. So make sure you throw go by, check out uh, that live, and, and uh, show them some support. That would mean a lot to them. And uh, so who else we got in here? We got Pete's Little Homestead. So Pete, welcome. Saw your video today about, uh, you know, he was kind of doing a walk-around tour and, uh, and um, you know, had a, got a creek. It kind of reminded me of, of that, of that creek that Daniel Arms has got across to get to his house, but that that's like a that's like a river. But Pete's got something similar. It looks like when it's draining down his driveway that runs across that. It's like I'd be terrified. I'd be cut off at some point from from like heavy storms and stuff. And I bet you probably have that problem. But uh, you know, all different kind of circumstances. So I you know we had one time before I put a culvert in the back of our property, the front culvert got washed out. And we really had no way to get in the property. We ended up parking on the hard road and then walking in uh, until we could uh, kind of take some fence panel down and then drive in through the fence um, panel because it was that was a mess. Um, what else? We got Bama Steve, the best life. Uh, Sweet Pea Farm, uh, welcome, 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 and uh, Sweet Pea Farm, thank you for the shout out. Thank you for helping to push some folks over here. So there's a couple of channels that uh, watch that follow Sweet Pea Farm. They go live every every Wednesday, uh, preceding us at uh, six o'clock. Um, so I generally can't catch the whole thing with Sweet Pea Farm New York um, because I'm generally leaving the office around 5:45, so I don't generally roll into the house until about 6:30 at night. Um, and uh, just quick enough to grab a bite to eat and then uh, go over and check out Sweet Pea Farm. But 
great channel and they said something on there tonight that all the cool people go live on Wednesday so so check out all of the Wednesday lives so another one that goes concurrently with us is old Reading farm It's literally one of my favorite channels they, they do an excellent job um, really really uh, enjoy watching their content so we have got uh, I think uh, this thing is really hard to follow with just me homestead Aquarius so so Robert says he's loaded up with a rattlesnake beans gonna go back and get more to share out all right man. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of I don't think I've ever heard of rattlesnake being Robert so that, that well that's a new one to me the bomber Steve says that hat that I was talking about is an a Kubra traditionally from rabbit felt but can also be made from leather they are a huge hat Aussie company yeah this kind of looks like it's it's kind of like a felt texture it's not leather um, it's more like a more like a felt um, well, a little French in Big Texas, and don't let me uh, don't let me get in the way of you eating dinner. Um, I'd get you in trouble. I know that firsthand. Um, uh, Paula Wells have to download, edit, but it died somewhere. Uh, what talking about. Um, so we got a bunch of moderators in here tonight. We got Paula Wells. Uh, we got MB Heritage Farms, and we have uh, Petway Family Farmstead. So it's great to see. Uh, James back in here moderating for us. And uh, so we got three mods in here tonight. And uh, uh, if you haven't checked out, you know, they're dropping they're dropping links to all the other channels in here throughout the night. So, um, you know, go in, if you're not familiar with a channel, go check them other channels out, man. And, and um, you know, give them, give them a shot. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not directing you go over there and sub them, but everyone in here right now, I can say, hold on, hold on. There's none in here that I'm not familiar with. And I would say go over and check out every one of those channels. If you like the content that we do, then you're going to like every every channel in here. So if they're not on your YouTube love list, go make it happen. Um, um, make it so like John, John Luke Picard. Um, all right, so. That's the mods. We have no joke time tonight because I am flying solo. We got 26 people in here. You'll notice there's no second screen tonight. So I got the helm. Um, uh, little Rick's off doing. Uh, uh, little Rick's out doing uh, dad things tonight. He had some other responsibilities that he didn't find out about until noon today, and uh, so I've relieved him of his dad responsibilities. So now, uh, Rick. Uh, at uh, Twin Brook Acres, ask the question if he's still in here. Let's grab his book from. <laughs> Just grab... He doesn't have a book, you know. I basically, you know, I, we talked about we talked about an agenda. We don't really have an agenda. I have kind of a very rough outline, and. Um, and uh, just something kind of the, so that I can follow through so I don't get lost and uh, so. Uh, Twin Acres, Twin Brook Acres, Rick said earlier, said, I'll ask them what's on your head. So tonight, this is another hat from my collection. This is NAF Naval Airfield at Sugi. Now, this is a cool base. This base is in Japan. And I got this hat also from my daughter because when she went into the Navy, she went initially over to boot camp up in up in Great Lakes up in Illinois from Illinois came down to Florida uh, to the Panhandle and went to some of her earliest schools she went to uh, uh, over in Pensacola Florida at the Naval Air Station over there um, and then that's where she got her orders from and, and if you if you're familiar with Jacksonville there's a lot of military here in Jacksonville in a gigantic um, Naval Air Station Naval Air Station Jacksonville so if you're in the aviation field, which she was, then it's pretty easy to get orders here. And so I was I was sure that my daughter, um, who went into the Navy to see the world, is going to come back to Florida per my request. Uh, she didn't do that. Uh, she took she took orders. Uh, Lala Fires, did you ever come to Norfolk or NAS Oceana? My husband was on was at Oceana. I was um, not. I went to I went to NA or to Naval Station Norfolk one time for a school, but I was never stationed up there. The whole time I was in the Navy it was seven years. I was stationed here in Jacksonville. Um, that's when they had a lot, a lot, a lot of ships here. So no, never been up there. But I did visit the first time I ever saw the ocean. I was probably well, my brother's six years older than me, so that would have been nineteen. I'd have been I'd have been thirteen years old. 
uh, his duty station was in. Oh, look at that. We got somebody joining us here. So, hey, running from a dark background. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? I don't hear you, Rick. Hold on. I don't hear him. Hold on. Um, I was 12 years old, and I went to see my brother, who was stationed in Norfolk. And uh, first time I ever saw the ocean, we went crabbing. I had a good old time. And, and it shocked me when we cooked the crabs because I didn't know crabs squeal. And you threw them into that hot water, they just started to squeal. And, uh, and uh, that was cool. Uh, they were good. They were really good crabs. <laughs> um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can't hear them. Nope. So, all right, they can hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I don't have my speakers on. That's why I couldn't hear you. That's a. I see. That's what Rick does. He's the technical expert. All right. So back to my topic. Naval Air Field at Sugi. This is in. Uh, I'm going to butcher this. Keno. Kanagawa Prefecture in Japan. It's about 22, they don't call it kilometers, I'm calling it miles because I calculate. It's 22 miles southwest of Tokyo. Um, and it was, this is a base that was set up following the end of World War II. Um, and it is home to the only permanently deployed carrier air wing in the United States Navy. Now, what does that mean? So it's Carrier Air Wing 5. In Carrier Air Wing 5, we also have one permanently de forward deployed aircraft carrier. It's the USS Ronald Reagan. They swap it out every few years. It's also home ported in Yokosuka, Japan. So Air Wing 5, Carrier Wing 5, supports whatever forward deployed um, carrier is in Japan at that time. So right now, Carrier Air Wing 5 supports the USS Ronald Reagan. Um, so here's the deal with with this base, and it's kind of a really cool history. If, if I ever I can intertwine some of these bases with um, kind of the history, all you know, I love history. There, we have several videos where I go um, kind of searching around, looking for uh, looking for history, so that I can kind of attach it to what we're talking about. So after the Japanese surrender in World War II, the United States Armed Forces then assumed administrative authority over the government of Japan temporarily. The Japanese Imperial Army and Navy were subsequently decommissioned, so they had no military. The United States military was the protective force immediately following World War II in Japan. Um, so they took over all of the armed forces until a new government was uh, instituted in uh, Japan. The plan initially for the surrender of Japan was that Allied forces would demilitarize Japan, meaning they would never be able to have offensive forces again they couldn't have an army or a navy as part of the surrender terms uh, in 1947 so japan although today they still have or they have since restarted and have both an army and a navy um, they are defensive not offensive meaning they are solely for the purpose of protecting themselves versus attacking any other sovereign nation so pretty interesting fact so naf atsugi they're they're Kind of mission and they call themselves this is kind of their call sign they call themselves the tip of the sword um sword s-w-o-r-d and their whole mission is to ensure stability in the western pacific ocean so there you go there's your history lesson based on my hat for tonight so it is 7 15 and as we do at 7 15 or thereabouts each week we bring in our special guest you want to come in rick nod your head all right, Rick wants to come in. <laughs> I just want to say really quick, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, I think it was because you didn't have your earbuds in. But I, I just want to say you couldn't. That's because you're not telling me I'm that not, I have an echo. Exactly. <laughs> just want to say uh, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Don't be too unfiltered. And uh, I wanted to ask you why they measure snakes by inches. You're echoing. I can't hear you. Because, uh, hold on. Why do they measure snakes by inches? I don't know. Because they have no feet. Oh, okay. All right. We skipped the dad <laughs> joke stuff tonight. Go do your dad duties. All right. All right. Bye, guys. All right. He's out of here. And there is Jess. Hello. Hello. I'm going to move you there. 
and uh, I'm gonna turn Rick off because he's always telling me I got an echo. So that's why I always have to wear that stupid earbud when ear earbud. So when he moves, I won't have to wear the earbud no more. Um, <laughs> Who else we got any whiskey and sunshine welcome um they have joined the party brian castle highs we got nunya texas on the back 20 welcome um who else i hope i haven't missed anybody andy miles hey how are you yeah we had some feedback because generally i've had my son in here andy helping us uh he's part of the part of the of the wednesday night live show and he's got some daddy duties so Normally I have an earbud in since he wasn't going to be here. I did not put the earbud in. I just turned the speaker off. So when I turn the speaker back on, we get this really bad feedback loop. So that's what that's about. Um, hope you're sticking out with us, though. Lee's Arkansas Bound, welcome. Uh, David's Outdoor 74. We got some new folks in here. If you haven't, if you have not been on our live in the past, welcome. Glad to have you. I'm going to stop talking, Jess. So, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so. This is Jess from Keto Homestead with Jess. And um, just like Boone Child's channel, I, I kind of uh, kind of got attached to Jess's channel because I'm fat and I need to lose weight. And and I you know, it's hard right now because I have my son living with me and his family and his wife is an excellent cook and cooks really rich food. So when they move into their own house, I'm going strict. I'm going, I'm going like hardcore. I'm going hardcore keto. And now I've got like this Wednesday night accountability group. So you guys are going to be become my accountability group um, for getting thin again. And then uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I won't, I don't know if I'm ever going to get like John Willett grow. He says he's been a 28 forever. I don't think I've been a size 28 way since I was like in fifth grade. But, but if I can, if I can get down to a comfortable 38, 39 or 40, you know, I'll be happy with that. So, yeah. Jess, I'm going to stop rambling. Tell us about yourself. Oh, what do you want to know? I've been keto eight years. I started out my journey because I had high blood pressure and I was pre-diabetic. I had back issues. So, I started out at 296 pounds and needed to lose weight and dove into keto and lost about 140 pounds. And now I am 150 pounds. So keto has done me justice. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Let me adjust my earbud here. Jess, can you say something? Yes. Hello. Okay. 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 Can you I hear can me? Hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> I didn't think about when I brought you in that I'd have to have my speakers on <laughs> and that creates that feedback loop again. So um, again, I don't have my technical expert here tonight. That's all right. All right. At least you have one of those. Most of us don't have one of those. Well, he, he bosses me around on the live. I know he's watching because he was not going to let me do this by myself without him being like big brother. He's like, he's like the Russian government of La La Farm. <laughs> live streams does that make he's you like nervous? A, he's like a, he's like my own personal kgb <laughs> does that make you nervous does it make me nervous no because i just tell him i don't care you know <laughs> i don't have to care i'm 54 years old now so, right um 140 pounds that's really amazing what made what kind of made that what kind of made you move to that level that's a that's a commitment in yeah. anybody's book i mean and it's you know everybody including myself i mean say, I, I need to lose weight. They know they need to lose weight. They go to the doctor for their annual physical every year. The doctor says you need to lose weight. You're borderline diabetic. You got hypertension. You're taking lots of pills, but you, but I still don't listen. I still, yeah. still overweight. So what, what was your kind of, what was that point where you reached and said, this, this got changed? Um, just being an overweight. Um, I worked in a nursing home for 20 years, so it was really hard for me to get around and lifting people up and stuff like that. Being on my feet for 12 hours at a time was really getting rough. And then there was like a rebellious part. When I was digging into keto eight years ago, there wasn't much research or much information out there. And I had went to the doctor and um, I explained to the doctor that I wanted to do keto and they were totally against it. Um, he pretty much ripped me up one side and down the other said that if I did keto that he would never see me again as a patient. Oh, really? Well, then I was just like, well, screw you. I'm going to do what I want to do. 
<laughs> so I went head on full fledged keto just because he made it kind of like a challenge for me, you know? So I really dug in and did research and figured out how it worked. So hobby farm homestead. So I'm, you know, I'm, you know, anybody's been in our lives, I have a hard time kind of monitoring all the comments and doing this. So if I don't catch your comment, like put it in all caps. I can't ignore that. And it stands out if you got a question. So hobby farm homestead said might be a stupid question, period. So I wouldn't call that a stupid question, but it's not a question. That's a statement. So <laughs> what is your question? Hobby farm homestead. Yeah, um, they wanted to know what does a keto diet consist of? The right. keto diet is um, moderate protein, high fat, and low carbs. And portion, uh, David says portion control is a big thing. No, not on keto. Um, my theory is you eat until you're full. This is not a starvation diet. I personally don't consider it a diet. I consider it a lifestyle. I'll never go back to eating man-made carbs or anything like that but just like any normal lifestyle you should you know eat three meals a day and that's what keto is but you're not trying to starve yourself you should eat what's going to fill you up and what's the deal with you know you know there's one that some people will say you know eat when you're talking about keto you're talking about really no processed foods but it's it's bigger than that Oh yeah. Am I right? Because it also it also limits significantly fruit, a lot of the fruits like oranges and bananas and things like that, which really, really I love. Um, I love bread and I love pasta, which are like those are the ones. But I can give up those. It's hard for me to give up fruit because I, you know, I, I eat fruit a lot, and yeah. uh, so I'll just grab like for my breakfast. It's no, it's nothing for me to have, you know, some kind of protein and then two bananas or two yeah. apples and that's my breakfast and uh, but you can't do that on a hardcore keto diet i mean right do you limit do you are you do you hardcore limit yourself like that yeah i'm pretty strict keto i've always been pretty strict keto there's some things i slide on but in keto world i'm pretty pretty strict on myself now like with the breads and stuff the pastas um those are the reason that you don't want to eat those is because the, they're starches and carbs and when your body digests them they digest them as sugar and it mm -hmm. spikes your insulin the whole part the whole point of keto is to keep your insulin levels low and with the fruit the fruit over the years if you've if you're into history and you ever look up our fruit from back in like the 20s and 40s they were completely different from what they look like nowadays our fruits have been so genetically modified. Um, they've like added sugars and stuff to them. Like back this, this group in particular will kind of appreciate exactly what you're saying. And if you want, if you want proof of what Jess is saying, you need to look no further than the Baker Creek catalog, because all of those heirloom fruits and vegetables that are in their catalog is what it used to look like. Um, yeah. You know, they weren't uniform and everything was perfect and you know that's that's commercial production consistency you know mm -hmm. you know anybody that raises chickens for example for eggs when's right. the last time you got a dozen eggs that looked alike yeah that's just not how nature works <laughs> so that's the reason we stay away from the fruits because they're very very high in sugar especially bananas bananas are very high in sugar now i do eat and consume a lot of berries and the reason is is the complex of the dna in the berries are so complex that scientists have not been able to figure out how to modify those yet so berries are good to go yeah so and you said i'm like you rick i could do without the pasta or bread um and i didn't say that what i said is i could i i guess i did say it. i could do without it but i don't want to <laughs> because i love bread for example we had a visitor come to the farm Sunday, this this last Sunday, and she is from Colombia, uh, or I'm sorry, she is from Poland. Her husband is from Colombia, and um, so they in the house they speak three languages and teaching their son who is two those languages. It's kind of a cool arrangement. Nonetheless, I digress. Um, 
she gets groceries, they eat completely natural. So she's been an egg customer of mine um, for going on three years and they eat between just those three. So one kid, two adults, about seven dozen eggs a week uh, is what they get. Um, they eat a lot of eggs. And uh, so they come out once a year and they want to come out and see the baby go. So they came out. Well, she's always bringing me chocolate and, and all these other carbon. To, I mean, but they're all either Polish or Colombian food. So this last week they brought me, I can't pronounce it, I'll butcher it. And anyone that speaks Spanish would make fun of me. So I'm not going to say the name of it because I really can't. Um, but it's this really yeasty, soft bread with queso cheese. You know what that is? That's that dip cheese that you get at the Mexican restaurant um, in the middle of it. And the bread was like that thick with queso cheese in the middle. It was phenomenal. I think I ate like two thirds of the loaf. Um, I never even offered any to, to Rick and his wife because um, Kimberly and I or Lala and I were eating it. So it was really awesome. All right. Go ahead. You can just tell me to shut up, Jess, at any point in time. I would never do that. Paul <laughs> Wells, but, you, but you can. <laughs> Paul Wells says bread is healthier when made from flour you make yourself. I'm looking at getting into that myself. I have to disagree with that because the reason is that also our grains in the United States have also been modified so highly and processed. But if you can get grains overseas, those have not been touched. Those have not been altered at all. So if you're able to make homemade breads out of those, I would suggest doing that. I don't know if that's feasible. I don't know. How, I, I've never looked into it myself. I just replace all um, my flour with almond flour and use that. You know, what's interesting is there was a, a documentary. It's either on Amazon or Netflix, one or the other on, uh, on uh, processed foods. And they, talked about all of the alternative grains away going well away from the from the contemporary wheat which is most what most flour is made with in the United States but they use some of these like 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 Baker Creek sells you know a lot of these heirloom varieties where the nutritional makeup of those of those fruits and vegetables are completely different than what you would get in the store they taste completely different one of the ones that they highlighted is and they use it in in uh, in in this uh, gluten-free bakery is a is a wheat called icorn wheat, which is a heirloom form of wheat and that's i guess the the one that they highlighted was a large farm up in uh up in portland or up near portland oregon and uh, and that's all he grows and he sells it all to these uh gluten-free or or bakeries that are making gluten-free bakery products so it's kind of cool wow how do you get fibers and vitamins with that diet? A lot come from fruits. Fibers and vitamins come from your leafy greens and all other kinds of vegetables. Um, I do a lot of kale and spinach. And um, the only uh, vitamins or minerals I take, I take um, trace minerals with vitamin B. And then I don't have a gallbladder. So the high fats um, in the beginning was an issue for me. So I take something that's called a uh, colicol and it supports your gallbladder and helps you process that. Um, a lot of my recipe has like high fiber stuff um, like the psyllium husk. I use a lot of that in my bread recipes or my noodle recipes. So the hobby farm homestead, that means I can eat bacon three times a day. In my book, you can, I can eat, and I don't care what Jess is saying. This is, this is, this is the Rick Robinson approach to keto. Yeah, I eat a lot of bacon. I generally will have, Lala will make a pound at a time and just keep it in the refrigerator. And I wrap vegetables in bacon. I eat bacon, I eat a lot of bacon. So now Jess, you can speak on the topic. <laughs> you still want to watch your intake on bacon, but you <laughs> can have it. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> but yes, I love bacon too. Like tonight I had a BLT salad. Um, and that's like one of my favorite dinners. I'll have romaine lettuce, like four cups of romaine lettuce with um bacon and cheese and mayonnaise in it. Yeah, you ain't lived until you have bacon wrapped celery. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right, what else we got in here? Um I think I'm caught up on um, questions, I think. Um, so 
keto is your is kind of the the angle that your channel comes at but is the the name is keto homestead so i'm assuming how does your homestead or how does what you produce on your farm just factor into your into your lifestyle because mostly what i grow is for my lifestyle for keto and that that was like the cool thing about the name i'm like you know i produce all my own food for keto so why not just name my channel keto homestead so very logical sense somewhere mm -hmm. in here uh, da, 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 da. they asked is it true that kale is no good for dogs i don't know that I don't answer know. i don't have a clue my wife my wife lala she says that the dogs can't eat anything Anything that I would eat, I'm generally willing to give to the dog, and then she yells at me for it. So yeah. I listen my to dog, I can listen to. My, my dog eats everything. Bit. She'll eat everything out of the garden if I let her. Well, that's what I mean. If if the dog will eat, there's like certain things like like I know that chocolate is not good for dogs, but yeah, gosh, they really like it a lot. So so it's like when she's not looking, I'll give my dog part of candy bar. <laughs> and, he's, and he's like, and he's like old, so. Um, I'll be far from home. I love pizza, so that's my bread intake. I agree with you, but but the keto part is the pepperoni that goes on, it goes on the pizza. Uh, Free Hadley is asking, how do you avoid the keto flu, flu for those just starting keto? Um, the most inexpensive way and how me and my husband avoided it was lots of pickle juice and lots of pickles because it's very high in electrolytes. And when you first start keto, that's the first thing you're going to lose a lot of water weight. And when you're losing that water weight, all your minerals and vit vitamins are getting flushed out of your body. So that's why the pickle juice and the pickles are good for that. That's really cool. So you're using that as kind of like a, for lack of a better comparison, Gatorade to, yes. to kind of replace electrolytes without all the sugar. Yes. That's cool. That's a great idea too. I bet. I mean, we're, I've never read anything like that. Where'd you come up with that? Or is that just something you kind of... Learning experiences. That's cool. Yeah. I always throw my pickle juice away, so I'm, I'm going to save it as my natural Gatorade. Yeah, I have jars and jars of pickle juice. <laughs> on, a, on a completely separate and unrelated note, I went out and I saw, I planted my herbs uh, about two weeks ago, and my dill just popped up through the ground today. So wow. I'm a happy camper. Um, we have a Labrador... Uh, he eats wire and glass. He literally eats anything, LOL. But I think he's in in for a good life, not a long life. <laughs> <laughs> and that, in my book, is what matters, Jess, is a good a good life. You know? Yes. It's going to be a happy life lived. Um, uh, uh, Money Trap says that kale is high in calcium oxalate which can cause health issues, including kidney and bladder stones in dogs. So on that note, um, oh. we can, we can um, digest kale fine, but when it comes to spinach, it's very high in oxalate too. And it, in humans, it will cause kidney stones or bladder stones. So you have to be careful with that. And the way you can combat that is with, um, organic lemon juice. Organic lemon juice will break down the oxalate and it'll dissolve any type of kidney stones or um, bladder stones that you get. Yeah. Mud tramp, that makes a lot of, that makes good sense because we've, you know, one of the things that we've learned through, uh, through our goats is that that's something that should never, so high calcium is really bad for, um, for, the bucks because it will lead to calcium buildup in the urinary tract. Um, so yeah, that makes, per makes perfect sense. Hobby Farm Homestead, I love pickle juice. I agree. Uh, Andy Miles has chocolate poison for dogs regardless of the original enjoyment. I agree, and I know that. Um, but you know, and, and I he don't get a lot. But if I'm like having a piece of chocolate, then then I don't give it to the other two because she would really. Lala would like really, she'd probably put me in the doghouse and boot me up to my own workshop if, if she found out I was giving it to the other two dogs. Um, but my, but Boone, it's just the black lab. If you watch the, the pond video the other day, you'll see there's a black lab in that. That's my dog. 
And uh, so he's constantly with me out on the farm. Wherever I'm at, he's there as well. And, uh, you know, if I drop a piece of chocolate, I don't go crazy looking for it because I know he's going to get it before it hits the ground. He loves chocolate. So. Um, the mud tramp, that's, that's great. To, that's interesting. Um, can you eat onions on keto? Yes. You want to limit them, but, yeah, you can. And the way I look at it, like, once you get to the size that you're happy with or you're at the health, the optimal health that you want to be at, I honestly don't see anything wrong with moderation. But I would be very wise to pick what you want to moderate. Like, for example, onions, I don't see anything wrong with that. Your tomatoes, as long as they're homegrown tomatoes, I don't see anything wrong with incorporating that. They do have a uh, sugar content in it. I just think moderation is best. So those of you that have watched my workshop videos, you'll appreciate this. So moving into the workshop wouldn't be so bad. I agree. It would be awesome living in my workshop if it weren't for the fact that I would have no food, no water, and I would go, I'd be like squatting behind the barn to use the restroom. So, but for those three things, I would live in my, in my workshop, but I don't want, I don't want any of those three. I like my food too much. I drink a ton of water and, and, and I, and I, and I, I draw the line at not having restrooms. <laughs> oh, all right. Dark chocolate harms dogs. Brandy ate milk chocolate from the time she was over 16 years old. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know white or light chocolate from dark chocolate. All I know is everyone that I've ever said says that chocolate's bad for dogs, but they sure do love it. Um, Someone's asking, is keto more gluten-free foods? Keto, no. Um, most There's so many different types of keto out there nowadays. Strict keto, like what I do, I don't do any gluten-free foods or gluten. It's no grain at all. Right. And that's kind of typical. Of, I mean, if you read the literature, that's kind of what it says is it's really kind of grain free. You know, how many, what, what, on, on, on average, how many grams of carbs are allowed to still stay in ketosis? It depends on your body. Like you know, keto, I, I, keto is really specific to the individual. I personally stay at 20 grams of carbs a day. And that has been for eight years. I've wow. stayed at that. Do you test yourself or do you just know what your body's telling you? You just read it. Um, I used to test myself uh, with the urine strips, but they say they're not that accurate. Um, the test strips, you know, for the glucose, it's they're pretty expensive. So I don't do that. But you can um, tell you can tell if you're in ketosis, if your urine is strong or your um, breath is strong. Those are really good signs to let you know that you're in ketosis. Um, so Pete's home, little home says, I don't eat onions. They make me sleepy. Well, they they don't make me sleepy. The problem is I don't like bad onions. I don't like, um, what is it, hot house onions. The ones that you get in the winter, typically, they're just bitter. They taste like an onion. If you want a good onion, if you ever get your whole, your hands on a on a Vidalia onion, which is a gigantic white onion. You'll never eat any other kind of onion again. Um, they are fantastic and they hold up really, really well over winter. Um, I've had I've had Vidalia onions stay in the refrigerator for two, three months. Um, they do give me gas though, so I'm gonna leave that comment at that point. They don't make me sleep, they give me gas. Um, but I love onions, I love good onions. I grew lots of onions, we're gonna get to that. Um, I don't have them anymore. The, the chicken apocalypse has hit my onion bed and uh and i don't have onion seeds in the ground no more um, as of two days ago um so getting back to your channel jess <laughs> so, your first video went up may 24th of 2020 you remember what it was oh i'm, I'm scared to know what it was i don't like looking back at those old ones <laughs> see i like looking at the old ones because you really are able to see how far a channel has kind of grown because on every channel that I've looked at, those very first videos are usually really bad. The yeah. video is bad. The editing is horrible. A lot of them are just done in one take, you know, good, bad, and ugly. Um, it was keto morning routine. It was you introducing the world to what you do every day. And you started off, but it didn't have an explanation. I left a comment on it for you. Why do you mix apple cider vinegar and water every morning? That seems like an odd combination. 
because um, apple cider vinegar is very strong. Um, the first time I ever took apple cider vinegar, it was in a shot glass and it was a tablespoon and it about killed me, took my breath away. <laughs> so I learned to mix that with water so it is drinkable. The reason that I do that is because apple cider vinegar um, will speed up the metabolism. It'll also hold off hunger. Um, it has a lot of benefits. There's a lot of medical benefits. It helps with anxiety and just so many things. So Wide Family Farm says, yep, onion sandwich. Brother, you don't know the half of it. The, the, the onion sandwiches with a big Fidelia onion sliced moderately thick on Again, I'm going, I'm, I'm showing my bread like here on, on two pieces of bread with very light mayonnaise and a little bit of salt and pepper. Ooh, there ain't nothing better than that than a sliced tomato sandwich. They are really, really, really good. Um, did you happen to see my bread recipe, Rick? I, I did uh, see your bread recipe. A lot of them are, are almond flour, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. I made, you know, I'm going to, I'm actually going to, going to try um, a bread recipe. I'll probably do it this weekend. Of if I have time to to make some bread that is more keto because I, I kid you not I can eat an entire loaf of bread and I don't know if you can even do that on keto <laughs> but I love I love bread period that's um, that's how my husband is he can get two loaves of bread and have a loaf of bread gone in a day I'm like how well, like, it's got to be good bread I mean there's a difference between like like Wonder Bread and good good fresh fresh break bread or yeah. fresh baked bread. Um, uh, add some cucumbers. Uh, there's some other comments in Can here. You use rice flour, no rice, rice and rice flour is very, very high in carbs. That's probably one of your highest carbohydrates is rice. So yuck, man, yuck. Are you responding to my onion sandwich? You need to try it if you're saying yuck, man, yuck to my to my onion sandwich. Or maybe they're talking about pickle juice. I'm not. I'm not sure. But all right, let's go back to your channel. All right. So we already talked about kind of your motivation. So you've made some some things that I thought was pretty interesting. Keto waffles. I have never seen a keto waffle recipe, and you did that with with almond flour. Then you made some mock potato pancakes, and that was an interesting one using radishes of all things. Yeah. Is there a particular radish? No, just uh, those ones were all the, the little round bell radishes. Like the little sweet, right, white globe kind? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it would have to be one that's not a spicy radish, because that would be a pretty bad well, potato pancake. When you cook radishes or fry radishes, they don't turn spicy. It when takes you do all, what? When you cook radishes or fry radishes, all the spice goes out of them. Really? There's I've no never done that. I've yeah. never lasted in the refrigerator long enough to cook them because that's another thing. I'll just grab a bunch of radishes and, and eat them. Uh, Robert, I disagree with you. I think your videos are are awesome. There's there's like a he's got this. I don't know. It's like a radio voice, like no other person that I watch on YouTube that will just soothe. You could be in the worst mood. You turn on a Homestead Aquarius video and he starts showing the little tadpoles or whatever it is that day. And that's that soothing voice. It'll put you into a better mood. I guarantee it. And, uh, you know, whether it's sitting out by a stream and him talking um, one day, he, I got to go back. He, he, I was on a live I don't know, a few weeks ago and he said that he was going to do a video and it was going to, you were going to see his face in that video. And I don't know if I ever saw that, but um I don't, you know, he's kind of like Wilson from Home Improvement. If you don't know, if you don't know Home, if you don't know, <laughs> Home Improved, if you don't know Robert, go check out Homestead Aquarius, cool channel. Um, all right. So we talked about that. Uh, what do you, I mean, so you've been doing this for how long? Eight years. What do you, do you miss anything or has it just been, so you've been doing it so long now, it's just, uh, it would be unnatural to. To not yeah. follow that diet regimen. I think I would have a heart attack if I tried to like eat sugar now or something, you know, my body's oh. so adjusted. And um, I used to deliver, I have a Amish neighbor that um, cooks a lot of pies and desserts and stuff like that. And they would have a hard time carrying those desserts and their buggy to town to sell. So they used to get me 
to take the pies and stuff into town for them so they could set up. And so it would be like the night before I'd go pick it up from their house and they'd sit in the car all night. And then I'd go the next morning to get in the car and just the smell from all the yeast and the bread and the sugar, it would make me sick. I'd be really? so sick to my stomach. Yeah, just sitting just there. Smelling it. Mm-hmm. Mm. So this is something I made. I actually made a, uh, it was a ground beef recipe. I think it was kind of like a goulash thing that I, it was, it was made out of a keto cookbook, but I, I added pasta to it at the end and it called for, for, and, and I didn't know this until just last week. So I'm not trying to be a show off know it all or anything. I just thought it was interesting that, you know, I love gravy, like biscuits and gravy. And mm -hmm. so you need to do a video on, on biscuits. Have you ever done that? I think. Yeah, might I, have have, done a bis I do have a video on biscuits and gravy. Do you? Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to make gravy out of the liquid that was in the bottom of the instant pot after I made the meat and, uh, and it said use xanthan gum and i'm like what in the world is xanthan gum and who in the world owns that stuff so i googled it to just to find do you well obviously you do because you do a lot of kiko or no, keto. um keto kiko is my brand is my breed of goat you do a lot of keto cooking so yes. i was just you know I'm, I'm 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 a very curious guy so immediately when it says xanthan gum, that sounds like a chemical to me so i looked it up do you know what xanthan gum is no it's fermented sugar that then <laughs> it, it can it's it's the sugar in it though is digested by a specific bacteria and turned into a non-digestible non-water or water soluble fiber that oh, can't wow. be digested by your body so whereas your body would uptake that sugar and dissolve it and it go right into your bloodstream when it's converted into this xanthan gum through um uh when it's converted into this into this xanthan product by this bacteria, um, it can't be digested by the body, and it slows the whole body's digestion down. So pretty cool. So that it's derived. Great. It's derived through fermentation from sugar. Yeah. Um, so tell me about tell me about the homestead part of keto homestead with Jess. Oh well, we've been raising um, animals and our own food for about nine. Uh, that's 10 years now, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So um, we were already, before I even started keto, I was, I had hogs and goats and ducks and chickens and um, cows. And then we got really into like gardening and just raising and butchering our own food. And that's really what keto is all about is eating, you know, the most clean food that you possibly can. So it just, all ties into each other. See, uh, Robert, that's not true because the your face has been revealed to Arkansas Woodcutter. So, you know, it's the rest of your adoring fans that don't know your face. So, so, so I guess you're not the only one that owns Xanthan gum. So, Gail, Gail has it. Gail Southern Living and maybe Crazy Homestead has Xanthan. But I've never even heard of it before. So um true to my problem solving abilities i did not go to the store i just put flour in, or or cornstarch in there because i knew that would work as well <laughs> and i got gravy um all right any other questions for for jess somebody pat way family farmstead says keto jess i may be wrong but it appears your back may still be bothering you did the weight loss keto help significantly it did i mean i was 296 pounds that was a lot of pressure on my back um but i do have a lot of back issues so it does i mean the weight loss obviously is going to help but the discs have been blown twice in my back so i'll always yeah, in your low back l4 and l5 mm. yeah you know, fortunately, I've never had back pain, but what I do for a living is I work with folks that have um, all various sorts of injuries. And, you know, just having a sprained back in the past, I don't wish that, even that upon anyone. So somebody that has a significant, um, no kidding, back injury, that that's a big deal. If you guys don't have a chicken butt t-shirt, you need one. Check well. Oh, I thought oh, I thought, I thought it was just a comment. So thank, thank you, uh, Michael and or Bobby Jean for the, for the shirt link. <laughs> 
that was that was not that was not intentional. I would be enthralled just learning something new, and there are tons of folks trying to learn how to live gluten free. How does so if so does gluten free does that vary a lot, Jess, from keto? Yeah. Like I don't know anybody on glut or on keto that does gluten free products. Because it's still a grain. It's still non keto. So you're so you're still you're st other than the grains, you're still there's still a lot of carbohydrates. Yes. That. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. All right, okay. Um any any other questions for Jess before we uh uh, before we uh, send her off, um, so uh, let's see what I can think of. Uh, make an amazing chocolate peanut butter cookie that's gluten free. Oh my god, amazing! I made peanut butter cookies the other day, but they were not gluten free. I can tell you that, but they were really good. Um, my 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 youngest grandson, so Patrick, the three almost three year old, him and I made chocolate cookie or or peanut butter cookies. They were phenomenal. Um, I used to have severe back problems good now, but I don't recommend the cure. That's for another time. Yeah. Green back pain. I've had three back surgeries, suffers tremendously. That's what I, that's why I was asking. So, all right, Jess, any, any closing comments or anything? Nope. I just hope everybody stays happy, healthy, and safe out there. Okay. Um, closing comments. Um, uh, later this afternoon, Jess put out a, a video kind of talking about, um, you know, some things that she's uh, dealing with on her homestead. Um, and I would encourage all of you go over there, take a look at it and, uh, and uh, communicate with Jess if you've got some, some suggestions. Um, if, you, if, if you can, if you can uh, uh, help in any way, um, please communicate with Jess and, and help her in any way that you can. Um, any closing comments, Jess? Um, the Pajama Party is at 11 p.m. If you want to have some fun and laughs, come check us out. Tonight? Yep, tonight at 11. I will have been sleeping at that time for 59 minutes. If I go to bed at 10 o'clock, it takes me like one minute to go to sleep. It drives my wife bonkers. Um, so I will. my head will hit the pillow at 10 o'clock, and I will fall asleep by 10.01. <laughs> so, so I will be in bed. Maybe I will dream of the pajama party. That doesn't sound right, so I'm going to retract that whole statement. <laughs> I'm not, no, forget I even said that. That sounds really weird, like like creepy weird. Forget I said that. Um, all right, have fun on your live, Jess. And, 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 and uh, this has been a blast. Enjoyed it, uh, getting to know you more. Um, and we don't have any other comments. So uh, good evening to you. Thanks for having me on. All right, take care. I'll be in touch with you. Okay, bye. All right, folks. Yeah, that sounded creepy. You know, forget what, forget that whole put down with party statement. That's that's kind of weird. Um, um, where is yeah, residence homestead? Just communicate directly with Jess, um, and that way you can you can kind of chat with her. You know, if you've got any comments or suggestions for. Her. So upcoming next week, I'm excited about this one. Uh, we have got uh, Sweeney's Creek Farm on here. Um, doing, uh, doing, how do I get that off, James? All right, there we go. I got it. Um, see, I don't have my production assistant here tonight. He's, he's usually flawless production. So, um, Sweeney's Creek Farm is next week. Uh, 310 is Paula Wells. Um, we're going to be talking gardening and then flavors and textures on 317. And then on 324, uh, we're kind of going freestyle. What does that mean? Freestyle meaning we don't have an agenda. It's just going to be talking. We'll probably share some links out, bring some folks on that might want to, uh, that might want to come on and chat. Um, our my hope is that by that time, that'll be around uh, 324, so third week of March, if not before that, that should be um, our 5,000 sub celebration. So uh, that's a huge milestone for us. And uh, hopefully we will be celebrating that the third week of March. So we're going to have a big shindig, a big kaboom celebration of uh, of that uh, of that milestone. So we'll be doing some giveaways and just uh, um, having some fun, chatting with folks, and and uh, um, whatever happens happens. So that'll be fun. Um, 
what else we got here get to know them segment so you know we're pretty much set on what we're going to be doing so it's going to be a combination of topical uh discussions going forward so here's what i would like for anyone that's in here i think most of the folks that are in here now are folks that are in here routinely um if if your channel we're dropping the whole under 1000 um requirement which is what we've had literally since we started these lives because we have really focused on smaller channels that um to help them grow and what we found is that those channels are now getting bigger and some of them are over a thousand and i want to be able to kind of maintain um the relationship that we've had with with some of our some of the channels that have been on here before that are over a thousand we're dropping that whole requirement to be under a thousand subscribers um so anyone that would like to come on the live we're going to allow them but we're going to change the format a little bit so instead of being about that channel it's going to be more topically oriented um so if you um anyone on here if you've got some ideas about things that you feel that you're uniquely skilled at things that that uh, not that you got some you got some skills but things you got some mad skills doing um, then throw me an email the email uh, Paul has put it up it's lala at the lala um, and and let's kind of I'd like to set up probably five or six get five or six panels set up um, going forward or even individuals of very topically oriented um, subjects um, very specific very narrow uh, so that we can do a deep dive onto certain areas for example the beehive homestead was in touch with me last week uh, I think Castle Hives was in here a little bit early I'm not sure if Brian's still on here or not but you know they they they're beekeeping channels now we do bees and uh, you know some of the suggestions was he that he had was you know catching a swarm um, or setting up a new hive or what kind of gear do you need for the new beer new beekeeper those kinds of topics, I think, um, have some value because they go into these into these lives. A lot of the live of the folks that are in here, I've, I've gone on to your lives if you've got them, and you know sometimes I'm not communicating. A lot of times I'm driving, but it's the same questions over and over. How do you catch a swarm? How do you get into beekeeping? Isn't that gear really expensive? Well, there's ways around all of that stuff. So that's kind of what we're going to be we're going to be swapping over to that format. Um, and uh, that will start probably around uh, the beginning of April is when that will start. So they've already put the merchandise link in. So let's give away either a shirt or a gift card. So here is the question of the night. So this is either for a shirt, your choice. Um, so if you win, if you want the shirt, you just simply go on to the Teespring store um, at... Uh, I'll put that link in there. You go on to that store, uh, pick out a design, a color, and a size, and uh, just tell me which one you want. If you want the $10 Amazon gift card, then just let me that know, or let me know that as well, and I will just shoot that to you uh, via email. It's just the, it's just a, a link that you'll get directly from Amazon. So here's the question for the night. So a couple of months ago, I had surgery. I had a, a septoplasty on my nose. Um, because I couldn't literally breathe out my left nostril. And um, the doctor said that I was not able to lift for eight, more than eight pounds for two weeks after the surgery. Blew my mind. I didn't think he was going to re be restricting me at all. But no more than eight pounds for two weeks. During that two weeks, what did I spend my time doing? I am the old jack of all trades, master of none. The best life, I agree. That's, that would describe me perfectly. So what did I do for the two weeks that I was not able to lift? The greenhouse, no. No, I that's what I was angry that I couldn't do, organizing the shop. So James has got it. <laughs> yeah, ja James in his comments to my organizing the shop video, eating and getting fat. John? John, 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 welcome to my live, my friend. Um, yes, I did that too. Um, <laughs> but no, organizing my shop is the answer. So in the comments, 
when James, after James watched that video, he left on there. This is some serious beat your beat your chest man stuff that you're talking about. And I'm like, I love, love, love that comment. So, um, John, James, I will be in touch, my brother. Um, let you let me know if you want another shirt or if uh, or if you want the gift the gift card. Either one would be fine. Um, so, uh, last got outside. Um, last weekend, put up the, the, I've kind of, in the video that we did about the gardening area, I, it was, I kind of talked about it, but I didn't talk a lot about it. Basically, we got a big deer population in this part of Northeast Florida. And more importantly, I've got a, all of my chickens free range. So they literally go wherever they want to go throughout the entire property. And um, so about, well, we started at last last spring so i've been working on this on this whole thing between the greenhouse the garden storage structure and the walls for this garden area i started last spring i didn't work on it over the summer but now i'm kind of back on i've got the outside walls done all but the but the entry wall um and it's basically going to be a, an enclosed garden so that deer nor chickens or any other animals such as dogs to go in and dig will be able to um John, will it grow was here the whole time? Well, John, I appreciate that, my friend. I appreciate that. Um, but I'm, I'm basically doing walls on the outside, so animals cannot get into this. So I've got two of the walls up. I do not have the front wall up, but I've got, I've got, I went out and I mulched all of my, or put uh, fertilized and, and put mulch down around all of my um, fruit trees in the yard. So there was like stuff for the chickens to go scratch everywhere. I also on Sunday chose to plant my onions, my peas, my beets, and my lettuce and put them into the raised beds. And I come home um, on uh, Monday night after work less than, so this was less than 18 hours later. And the chickens had gotten up into those beds. Now they can't, they can scratch anywhere they want on 20 acres anywhere they possibly would want to scratch they could go scratch um they chose my two foot wide by 24 foot long raised beds to scratch all of the potting soil i put in there was like scratched out there was holes in there that looked like they had like somebody had lobbed bombs at, at these raised beds there were holes this big around so that has not so so the chickens have gotten my seed so I'm going back to uh, going back to the drawing board on that. Night all, Angie. Good night. Good night. My coach just turned into a pumpkin. <laughs> so I agree. I got like two hours, Angie, before my before my coach turns into a pumpkin too. I got to go to bed. So um, that was a gigantic waste of time and very disappointing. So um, I'm going to try to finish that third wall. That way the chickens can't get into that structure um, at all again. So um, kind of perturbed me a lot. Um, but we do got the peppers and tomatoes there in the greenhouse. Those have uh, those have uh, sprouted and uh, doing well. Um, and then we're going to close on this. So, you know, a lot of folks, when I go into these lives, I was on, uh, on a, a free handling made a little bit earlier. And the, and, the, and the discussion migrates to Magnus. Now, if you're not familiar who Magnus is, Magnus is our bottle baby. Um, he was... He was about two and a half pounds, uh, just shy of three pounds when he was born. A little tiny, tiny thing where he should have been upwards of seven, eight, nine pounds in that range. So a little tiny thing, very, very tiny compared to his siblings. And uh, so we've kind of adopted Magnus as the, as the mascot for the farm. Well, in all of 2020, the, the 4-H club did not have any meetings. There was no meetings that happened last year because of the, because of the pandemic. So yesterday was our very first uh, livestock meeting um, for in the last, well, in almost 10 months, however, well, almost 11 months. Um, and the topic was baby goats. So Magnus went on a field trip last night um, to, uh, I did get my shirt. It's great. Thanks, John, for letting me know, buddy. Um, so MB here, it says uh, uh, Magnus is the mascot. He is. And you know, so Madeline took him to the 4-H meeting on a leash because he walks right with her like a dog now. 
and uh, went in there and people just went gaga over this little goat. And, uh, you know, a few of them got to feed him and, and finish off his bottle. And if you've seen the little short that I did, he eats that bottle really, really quickly. So it was fun. And they had some great, great feedback. And, and uh, there's really nothing like watching these kids' eyes get big and how excited they get. You know, when they when they begin dealing with and working with animals, that's why these clubs that kids get involved in, things like Boy Scouts, things like 4-H, things like um, um, uh, FFA, there is no better, uh, and Junior ROTC, all these clubs, things that allow kids to do these unique things, whether it's farm or agriculture related or non-farm, it's just nothing that helps build character for these kids more than than those kinds of activities. And uh, so Madeline, we're fortunate that she's going to be showing, uh, I think this year she's doing, um, she's got her purebred uh, boar that she was grand champion two years ago at our local farm. So she will be showing her again. And then we've acquired another um, registered boar, which is 100% boar. The one that won Grand Champion was 80%, just shy of 80% boar. This one's 100% boar. And we've also got a, uh, a dairy goat that will be shown this year. So she's been working uh, with, uh, with that goat as well. So just super excited to see, um, super, super excited to see um, her participate in that. And Magnus is doing it with her. So, um, well, folks, that's about all we're going to chat about tonight, unless you've got some other things. So, Paula, well, what would you say on there? I have sprouting just a few so far, but I'm excited. So that's awesome, Paula. Very cool. Well, we planted, I think I've got all together. I've probably got, um, I don't know, I would probably say about 36 plants or so that I planted are out in the greenhouse. And, uh, they started planting. I got I did some early season lettuce out there, so um, that's in the in the little in the in the potting containers as well. So I'll, I probably won't do any transplants of that. I'll probably just um, harvest that when it gets large enough. But um, it's 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 coming along. But it, you know the greenhouse is doing exactly what I wanted it to. It allows me to start things really early and next year hopefully um, when it starts getting cooler around October. Uh, then I will be able to uh, will be able to keep continuing to grow throughout the uh, throughout the winter months. So um, that looks cool. So all right, uh, folks, I'm gonna call this one an evening. So we're down to like 17 folks in here. So uh, the folks that are the, the stayed in there right till the end, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, love chatting with you. Um, and uh, this has been fun. So, folks, always remember, treat others as you would like to be treated. Good night, all. Take care.